This video will help you get started with CCP4i2, the new user interface to CCP4. When you first start CCP4i2, you'll see the browser window. This works like a simple web browser and will be used to view tutorials, documentation and other files. We normally organize our work into projects. You can choose how you want to use projects, but typically one project would correspond to one crystal structure. To start a new project, you can use this link, or go to the Projects menu and select New Project. Give your project a name and click Create Project. A project window will then appear. You can reopen this window in future using the Projects menu. To start, we'll need some data. Demo datasets are available under the Utilities menu. We'll use the RNAs data. Now we want to run a task. Let's try a refinement first. On the right is the Task menu. You can get back to here by using the Task menu icon. Open the Refinement section and double-click Refinement with RefMac 5. The new job is shown in the job list on the left. The Input Data tab is shown on the right. This is where you select the inputs for the task. Other tabs have advanced options. Options which are highlighted in red are the ones which you have to fill out. For refinement, we need a model and some structure factors. Normally, these menus will allow you to select data which is already in the database. But this is our first job, so we need to import some data. To do this, we use the small file button on the right. First, we'll select the atomic model. Now we need some observations. These happen to be in an MTZ file, which can hold lots of different datasets. So when we select the file, we also have to select which datasets we want. The data may be intensities or amplitudes with or without anomalous differences. In general, tasks will take any kind of observations, so by default we'll use the richest form available. In this case, we have anomalous Fs, so we'll use those. It's generally better to use intensities if you have them. When importing a file, we're also asked to say something about where it came from. This will help you with your data management. Finally, we'll select a set of free R reflections in the same way. Now we click Run. The icon in the job list will change to show that the job is running. As soon as some results are available, they'll be shown in the Results tab. We can see the most important statistics as a table and a graph, including the R and free R factors and the geometry statistics. If we want to run the job again with different options, we can use the Clone Job button. When the job is finished, the icon in the job list will change. We could now go back to the Task menu to select our next job. But there are also some suggested jobs which we might want to do next at the bottom of the results. Let's do some manual model building in Coot. Here's the manual model building window. When you open a new job, CCP4i2 can fill in the input data using data from a previous job. We can choose which job we start from using this menu or this icon. In this case, we're using the data from the refinement job as the starting point for model building. We can always look at the contents of a data object by right-clicking on the data object icon. These icons can also be dragged between jobs. In this case, the data are selected automatically. So we'll just click the Run button to start Coot. We'll do some validation and model building as usual in Coot. For example, 
This sidechain confirmation looks wrong. Once we fix that, a water needs to be deleted. When we've finished editing the model, we need to save it. Instead of using the normal file menu, we'll use the Save option in the CCP4i2 Extensions menu. This will ensure that our changes are recorded in the CCP4i2 database. Our coot job has been recorded in the job list, so we have a full record of what we have done. If we just use coot as a viewer and don't save anything, the job will be deleted from the list. For more information, most tasks have their own documentation pages, which you can get to with the Help button. You can also ask questions on the CCP4 bulletin board.